because you stopped, you're, you're stopped on the highway with no rhythm. Ma'am, don't make this any harder than it has to be. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, LaDon, Richmond, Virginia in the building. Yes, sir. I appreciate you bringing me on. Hey, I, I appreciate you reaching out to me, man. We're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. So you sent me uh, two videos to to peep out one was looked like you was on the side of the road and the other one was at a was at a truck stop both of them unfortunate situations occurred and you had interactions with with the police at both places so with the incident that happened with you on the road take us back to what happened hold on I'm 
you need to get out of the car. Just out of the truck. Get out of the truck. Get out. Get out. Now. Don't get out. Get out. Get out. Hold it. I feel safe. I feel safe. I don't feel safe. Get some assistance out of here. Get out of the car. Oh, what? You want to go to My ID is in the back. Okay. No, no, no. I'm not getting out no. of this truck. Get out. Get out. Why are you Get out. You crazy? Just get out of the car. You just told me okay. my ID. Get, get out. Get out. No. No, not How you ain't gonna give me a super bag? Get out. How you ain't gonna give me a super bag? Come on. Get out. I'm not. Get out. Y'all got dispatched.
And you don't you don't even need a reason to stop a, uh, a track trailer anyway. So yeah, you're good. Um. No, no, you're good. You're good. Obstruction. Yeah. Um. Stop on the highway. Failure to identify. Failed to ID. Um. I guess that's really all I have right now. Right. It's on the car. Got it. Yeah. Good. Is that a tractor trailer? Oh no, I would assume it's her company's. Well, she's a contractor for Amazon. Yeah, I don't know how that works. I don't know whether she's high or just. She might have something in the truck. Yeah. I'd like to get into it. I mean, I'll ask you to send it. got the proper can't, can't ask for consent when she's in cuffs. Right, okay. Uh, but you can do an inventory search. Yeah. You're towing it anyway, so. Yeah. So we just, we just get a record for that big thing? Yeah. to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak to an attorney and to have an attorney present during any questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you at government expense. Knowing and under your, understanding your rights, as I have explained them to you, are you willing to answer any questions without an attorney present? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. Is there anything in the car? Never mind. You know what? Okay. So we've got a tow truck on the way for our car. They're good. They're good. They're good. They're good. They're good. They're good. They're Got a salad, pizza, maybe she just doesn't like cops. Maybe. All the incense things. So we got a phone. Two phones. Hey, Matt. Yeah. There's no accident, right? No accident. No crash. No. That's why I was called in as because she was parked Go ahead. with the car behind her and they thought it was an accident. I the find them out. Okay. 
me if I'm wrong, commercial vehicle drivers have to provide. He's breaking the law. Yeah, I know. Just standing here is quite the law. Stevens to ask her because the socials on the on the next page. Yeah.
very funny. What's up? Uh, she said that's her. I ran her. She's licensed and commercial. She's got a commercial driver's license too. No warrants. That popped up. Nothing. Um, I ran her through locals. Nothing at locals. So I don't nothing know what the hell her problem is. Yeah, I don't know either. She I caused mean, a lot of. Uh, it was literally a traffic stop. Like a. I know. Like a fine. If that, it could have been a warning. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just go through. I mean, it's your discretion, but... Yeah, I haven't found anything of value other than this, the two phones. Yeah. I guess you could bring the phones with her, but I don't... What's up, man? I'll be with you in just a minute. Huh? I'll be there in just a minute. Okay. I was just wondering if it was okay to move the truck. Yeah, I just got to finish up with a few things. Okay. I'll be done in just a second. So what happened? Um, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. You can move with me in it. Hey. Yeah. What I would do, so you got, she sat here for more than 10 minutes, right? Yeah. So they have to set out triangles. She did not set out her triangles. That's a code section that you can get her for. Okay. Also, write her for uh, 888, which is illegally stopping on the highway. That's what my initial was. But yeah. then, like I said, they have 10 minutes to set their triangles out. And that's the one that, that's a good one. Yeah. But she didn't have, she was here for longer than 10 minutes, so she was broken down, which it doesn't seem like she was, the truck's running. Yeah. So she didn't set out her triangle to do anything that she needed to do. Right. And then all your other stuff that you got on, but. Yeah. Yeah, definitely got her for the 888, so. Yeah, I appreciate right. it. Yeah, man. Need any, I'm going to get out of here if you need anything to come. All right, appreciate it.
see anything else of value in here. Oh, fine. Yeah, I've already documented that. Um, I was going to make it go down for one help. There you go. Oh, there it goes. Help you get out. Yeah. I don't really see anything else. It's fine. So that's about all the only other thing I see. Yes, yeah, cool. Queen. Oh, shit. That's slower than I thought. That was lower than I thought. Oh, there's another point right there. Yeah, this is, I already got that. That's probably all because there's fuses behind there. Uh, <laughs> all right, so smoke black headphones, right? Shut down the lane. in any particular pocket. Hey, you want to put it in the front seat for me? Hey, I'm not stopped, dude. My phone. My phone is stuck. Which one is yours? On the dash. That's yours? Yeah. The, the, yeah. The one I was reaching for before. Yeah. Go get that joint. Go get it. All right. Hold on. Yeah, if you that's what I was telling that, them. If that's you were friends that, I might go get it. I asked them. They okay. said... All right. But uh, please, like in a situation... Please. Where yeah. are you going to drag me? Listen. So, I don't understand, I don't think you understand what's going on here. You're under arrest, okay? Okay, so, I'll be out but, tomorrow. Okay, alright. Um, but, is, do you want this up front? I wanted my belongings. Do you, do you want this up front, or do you want this in the... It don't matter, bro. Do you want it in your pocket? I'll put it in Okay. So, alright, well, well, we'll see what if, what we can do. What you mean? Okay, so look, what we'll do is, we put them in. I'll you the You know where he's taking yeah. Oh. Who saw it? Was it you? Yeah, I'm the one calling it. Um, do you pro do you mind providing a witness statement just to say that it was here for over ten minutes or whatever? Yeah. All right. I know 
see if I got it. You saw it, then I you called it in. I called it, I went to, you know, I was at T-Storm. Like estimated like, time of Went to Slat Tide, Coffee in Wattsville, and came back, and she was still there. Yeah. And so, I called it in on the way to the station. So, then time for us to get out. So, how long do you think that was? She probably at least there 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Yeah. yeah. Well, then write down what your time frame was. Um, like, when you saw it, where you went, um, and then just basically the timeline of what happened. You know, for a while now, a lot of odd things have, have been going on, you know, like I, but, you know, as adults, we maneuver, right? We handle situations and we, we go on about our business. But when we, when we running into situations where we're dealing with different law enforcement departments and stuff like that, and things are not going how they pose the goal, then it's time for, for us as drivers or, or anybody to do things like this and get the word out, right? So, yeah, uh, initially, the, the two videos I sent you, one was um, of a department here in Virginia. Um, as you can see on the, the video, like, it was like a whole movie, like, right? Like, I didn't know what to think of it at first, right? All I see is the fire department, the paramedics. Um, 
I had an emergency stop where where I had to, you know, stop on the side of the road and and handle something, right? It was my emergency. And uh, all of a sudden, it was a whole movie. And so I I wasn't sure what what was going on. I honestly thought that they were handling something else. I had no idea all of that, all of those teams came on scene for me, for my truck, right? Um, if you seen in the video, at the beginning of the video, you seen that I was already outside the truck. Um, I think the beginning of the video, you see me climbing into the truck with my bag. I spoke to everybody because again, nobody came to me and said they had any issue with me, you know, where I was parked or nothing. So I just spoke to everybody, passed everybody. Um, I actually passed the officers in the store that I had the emergency uh, reason to go into. We spoke and everything. So in my eyes, I didn't know what those teams had arrived for. You know what I mean? Like, and so when I get in the truck, I get ready to get myself to go because I'm running Amazon. I see the officers coming to my truck, which the door was open. As you can see, it was wide open, right? So it, it was like they had full view of the inside of my truck. Okay, you pulled off to the side of the road for emergency purposes. It could be mm-hmm. almost anything. But the video shows that you're already in the truck and the cops came over to interact with you then. But you already said, but that's where the video started. Well, I'm, I'm assuming the video that I got is from the cop's point of view, right? That's that's the body cam footage. Okay. Correct. Okay, okay. Yeah, so from that point of view, they walked up to the truck and you was already in the truck. And that's when the interactions between you and, and the cops started to take place. Okay, so at that point of the interaction, the cop is talking to you, you're talking to the cop bag, both of your anxieties are raising what was the cop asking you to do at that point that you said what you said in the video okay and so i just want to backtrack just a second lockout and so maybe you didn't see the maybe you didn't see the very beginning of the video but if you when you turn on the video you see me climbing into the truck and you see him standing talking to the other team. Yes. Yes. If you look, you, you maybe you missed it, but he I had I had to pass them to get into the truck. I just okay. wanted to make that clear. Okay. So if they had any type of issue I had on my vest or anything like that, they could have said, Hold on, ma'am, but let's let me talk to you because we're here for are you the driver of the truck? I'm the only one out there without a uniform. So they, they had to know that I was the driver. So I just wanted to make that clear, right? So at that point, you you walking past them. Where are you parked to, to make them come over to see what's going on with the truck? So, so I'm in the left lane. Like, it's like a turning lane. So it's not in the middle of the highway. The, the traffic has two other lanes that they can pass me. Mm-hmm. What I did was I got all the way over to the left. Mm-hmm. I put on my blinkers because it was a situation. So oh, okay. we all human. Okay. We all human. Okay. Some people feel like truck drivers pose to be machines. We are not. Right. Sometimes right. our bodies go through things and we just have to do what we have to do. Okay. I did, however, make sure I was safe. I made sure the person, the, the other drivers could come around me and make a left. As you can see on the camera, it was plenty of space for everybody to maneuver around my truck. Okay, I got you. I got you. Unfortunately, your body's talking to you and you had to take care of that situation hey. and you had to. Hey, it's pull communicating. Off. It's communicating, yeah. Yeah. Out. Okay, okay. So you had to pull off to the side to, to make sure that happened. So you got out the truck to go and take care of that while you were still on the on the highway. And as you was coming back, that's when you saw all the activities around your truck, pretty much. I thought, again, I thought they was handling something else. Nobody said anything to me. So okay. I get in the truck. Okay. Okay. So I pass everybody. I speak to everybody. I think that's on the camera, too, because it also had a camera. So I have that footage as well. But you see me walking past them, waving, speaking to them. I get in the truck. I'm ready to go because, again, I'm running Amazon. So I see them start to approach me, the two officers. I leave the door open. There's no problem. There's nothing, you know. So he says, I forget what he says, but the video states what he says, right? 
And the whole the whole issue was, you know, it could have been merely if he if he wanted to do anything like out, it could have been a ticket, right? It, it could have been a warning, just like one of the other officers said, one of the other investigators said on the video. You know, it didn't have to go to the point where you're putting me. Two officers are putting me out of my truck. Um, once I seen it escalating, because I, like I said, I, I never been in that area before. Um, I didn't know what was going on. Um, uh, when I seen it start to escalate, I immediately asked for a female cop because I kind of felt like where it was going to go. Um, I also asked for a supervisor, a white shirt, a lieutenant, or somebody else need to be right here because I feel like it's going where it don't need to go. Um, I'm at work. I'm in my work vehicle. Everything is on the outside of the truck. Um, he initially asked me for my ID or my driver's license. I told him that my license was in the back, um, in my bag. Um, I said, and I don't feel comfortable getting up. Um, I said, I can give you my information and you can write it down and run everything. The name is on the truck, on the door. Um, I can give you whatever information you need. Like, um, and apparently that wasn't enough. And so that's when I guess they felt the need to extract me from my truck so okay okay the back and forth in the video the officer was clearly well both of y'all was clearly agitated because he was asking you one thing and you kept rebuttling everything that he kept asking you why not just get up and get your license and just show it to him well so i didn't want to go because we kept going back and forth I didn't feel like I would be safe to get up from the seat and go to the, in the back of, of my cab. Right. Um, if I would have felt like I would have been safe to do that, then it wouldn't have been no problem. If you look at the video of the interaction back and forth, when I went to press the record button on my phone, that's when they started to grab me out the truck. My phone was on the dashboard. My phone was on the, the holder. So if I can reach for my phone to say, hey, I need to record too, and y'all go to extract me out of my truck, what do you think would have happened if I would have got up out my seat to get my driver's license? Like, seriously, like, the door was wide open. They had full access to know that I was in there by myself. They had full access to step up on the steps and talk to me face to face. It had no reason to progress the way it did. I'm in a commercial vehicle lockout. And that's what we need to stand on as drivers out here. Because let's be clear, I'm not the first and I'm not going to be the last driver that this has happened to. And it's going to take somebody to step up and say, hey, they can't treat us like this. We move America. We move the United States. It's easy for them to run any information they want if we're in a commercial vehicle lockout. There's no reason for a driver to have to leave their seat at all. No reason. Why Why do we have to get out the truck to speak with them? Because they don't want to look up? Is that the reason? Because there's no reason. There's no other reason. You have the trailer license plate. You have the, the truck license plate. You have most trucks have the company name on the side of the door. I even asked that. I told him, I said, hey, I can call the owner of the truck if you want. Like, but me getting out of the truck, what was that going to solve? Let me ask you that as a as a male driver, as a driver that's been driving a little bit longer than me, what would me getting out of the truck have, have proven or solved to him if my ID was in the back? I'm just saying, what would that have proved? I, I was already outside the truck. You passed me. We spoke. And every even that's on camera. So what would me getting back out the truck prove to him? I would have still had to give him my information where he could go check, right? So why why couldn't I do that from the driver's seat is all? I I don't know. Of course I wasn't there. But I I've been in situations like that. I I definitely handled it a lot differently. People handle certain situations different from from everybody's experiences. My way is 
keep it simple. When I'm out here, I, I've seen a lot of interactions with drivers, even non-commercial drivers. I, I just see that the, the interactions with the laws, period, for me, I just keep it simple. My experience is definitely not going to be yours as yours is definitely not going to be mine. But you did ask me the question. I'm not sure what difference it would have made. But me being in a situation similar to yours, I would have just gave him my driver's license and the paperwork and just kept it moving. I, I feel that the less time that I have to deal with DOT and or the laws, period, the better for me. They'll just come back over. They'll give me a ticket. They'll give me my inspection paper. If it's something that I disagree with, I'll, I'll take it up in court. It's just me. People may not agree with me, but I'd, I'd rather take it up in court than taking it up out there because we're not going to win. We're not going to win. It's, it's going to be situations like that. You're not the first and definitely won't be the last. You're going to come across irate officers, irate DOT personnel. For me, the, the less confrontation that I give them, the better for me to just get the F ones. Do I see what they did to you was, was right? No, I wasn't there. But from what I saw, it, it, it wasn't right. But both of y'all escalated to the point of them physically removing you from from the truck. And we'll talk more about what happened afterwards. But I, I, I don't know. Like I said, my my interactions with the laws is, is totally different. Now, that's I, I would say that that's because I'm, I'm older, I guess I'm, I'm 55 years old now. 20 year old Sean probably might have reacted different. When I was young, I definitely had my had my smart mouth run-ins with the cops when I was young. But 55-year-old Sean, here's my license, bro, my insurance, and being that I'm a CMV driver, here's the paperwork. Take it back to the take it back to your car. Do what you need to do, bro. Come back to me. Give it to me. Thank you. Please come again. I right. valid. That's valid. Your, your way of thinking is valid, right? But but I, I stand on accountability, okay? And so as officials, right, they got to be held accountable for their training. They got to be held accountable for how they handle situations. Now, let's be clear. I wasn't in a car like he kept saying, get out of the car. I'm in a work vehicle. So already he should be disalarmed, right? Already you're not dealing with somebody that's running the street, somebody that's drinking. I'm in a commercial vehicle, okay? And I also want to make sure we're clear because of future things that's going that's going on, right? When I told him my driver's license was in the back, I said, I give you my information, okay? Now, most officers would have took out that little pad that they have in their back pocket but as I have 16 years of prior law enforcement experience, a lockout, like, you know, I, I, I wasn't a cop, but I do have 16 years, right? So I know how to de-escalate a situation and, and I know procedure, right? And it's just as merely as the same thing as me saying, oh, man, I ran out and left my driver's license at home. Here's my information. I can give you every single piece of information you need. You can write it down how most officers do. And they take that back to their car and verify everything. So it could have went. It didn't have to go the way it, it did, right? I tried to de-escalate the situation. Could I have got up and went and got my license? Yes. But I also told him, hey, my license is in the back. I don't feel comfortable moving. I will give you my information. Can I get a female cop? Can I get a lieutenant out here? Because I'm thinking they're going to come in and de-escalate it, right? So, again, it didn't have to go from zero to ten, right? It didn't have to go from two officers pulling me from up high down to the ground because of whatever they felt. I gave them no reason to go that hard, right? Like, it was absolutely no reason for excessive force that way. They had no reason to search my truck. They didn't smell anything. As you can see, and I just want your, your, your uh, verification, my truck was clean as a whistle. Am I correct? Yeah, from from what I seen when they got into your truck, yeah, it, it wasn't it, was clean, it wasn't right? it wasn't nothing in there that they that they found that was incriminating. As a matter of fact, the cops was talking back and forth about the whole interactions while they was inside the truck.
Yeah. The scary info. What's up? Uh, she said that's her. I ran her. She's licensed and commercial. She's got her commercial driver's license too. No warrants. That popped up. Nothing. Um, I ran her through locals. Nothing in locals. So, I don't know what the local. hell her problem is. Yeah, I don't know either. She I mean, caused a lot of... Uh, it was literally a traffic stop. Like a, I know. Like a fine. Correct. And as you might not remember, but I'm going to remind you real quick. One of the FBI agents, which I, why did the FBI have to had to have to be there? So see, it's been a lot of things, right? That, that that has been going on that led up to this. But I just want you to know that these type of things can't keep happening to important people that move the United States. I know we just think we truck drivers, but we really are the chain of the United States. Re like really. Um, if you notice, one of the agents said, oh, she must have a problem with cops. Maybe she just doesn't like cops. Maybe. I just informed you, Lockout, I got 16 years of law enforcement experience. That's facts. So that ain't it, right? That can't be it, because if I wanted to be a cop, I could with my background. So that's not the issue, now is it? So we can't, we have to be held accountable. We can't do stuff and then try to put it on somebody else, which is what they did. They tried to justify them yanking me out my truck, putting me in handcuffs, dragging me, trying to make it seem like I'm fighting them. When in reality, they was like slinging me like I'm, I'm handcuffed. It was no reason for you to be pushing me, trying to push me on the ground. I'm handcuffed. What can I do? You just yanked me from a 13-6 truck into almost a ditch. It wasn't a, a ground level. You yanked me from 13-6 to a ditch. For what? Okay, so they pull you out of the truck. Now you're in handcuffs. Did you get arrested? Did you go to the station? What happened after they searched the truck, had you in handcuffs? What, what happened after that? Sure. So they illegally searched my truck, which is against my Fourth Amendment rights. They illegally seized my truck. Search and seize, illegally search and seize, Eighth Amendment, right? They violated several of my rights, okay? But to tell you what else happened, okay? Again, you see him in my truck, searching my truck, no problem. As he proceeds to get out of the truck, he says, and you're more than welcome to go back and look at the video. I think it's at the 28th mark, 28 minute mark. He stands and get ready to get out of my truck and say, wow, this is a long way down. That's lower than I thought. I said that was lower than I thought. Oh, another right there. So you just pulled me from the truck and you just admitted on camera, on your camera, that is a very unsafe act to get out of a 13-6 truck. But you pulled me from it. Okay, fast forward. I get handcuffed. He makes it clear that I'm getting I'm getting arrested. And like I said to him, I'll be out tomorrow. I was actually out the same day in a few hours, actually. They had no grounds to arrest me, number one. They could have just handcuffed me and then let me go on about my business. They didn't find anything, right? So he was kind of torting me, right? T-O-R-T, -T, right? Again, which as an official, that you're violating my rights. You can't threaten me when there's no reason. So they, they began to take me down to, to you know, their, their precinct. Um, and, you know, without going into too much detail, I was out in a few hours because they really had nothing to arrest me for. Right. Again, they, they seized my truck. I had just started working for that owner. Op. Um, I lost my job, you know, due to this, because, who, you know, even though it was no, no fault of mine, who wants to deal with all of that? Right. As an owner, he, he got money to make. He had to pay to get his truck and trailer released. Right. So all, all of that stuff you know, is, is, is a huge problem when it, when it's just happening on a regular and, and th thank God for platforms like yours and, and, you know, where people can speak out about things that go on like this. Cause imagine the drivers that it's happening to, and they, they not even saying anything, right? Again, my thing is all about accountability. We got to be held accountable for the things we do, you know, when you are in the city, when you are an official, you have to make sure you don't violate rights. You have to make sure you don't use excessive force. And if you do decide to get out of line like that, you have to be held accountable as a department, as a team, 
as an individual officer, you have to be held accountable. So, so at the station, you wasn't charged with anything. Uh, they they charged me with obstruction of justice. So I guess they was trying to say that you know uh, I wasn't I didn't I didn't do as they asked. But again, I asked them. I told them that I could give them my information. No problem. Okay. He had the choice to not take that, right? But I'm in my commercial vehicle. I'm in my work vehicle. So it, it was no reason why he shouldn't have taken that, right? So actually, I didn't obstruct justice. Okay. So did you go to court or did you pay a fine or did you go to court? Well, I, I'm not going to discuss that, but I, but I will say it's on record um, that the judge told me that I had a civil case. That's on transcript. That's on black and white. He told me I had a civil case, which is actually how I also got the police footage. Like, they don't hand over those discs easily, right? They they put that dick in my hand. So I, I just want to make sure, you know what I mean, we're, we're clear, like, that they understood. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you can request that when you in in situations like that and you need information from their end so that you can put your whole case together and 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 present it to to the court okay uh, you you did mention that you unfortunately got let go when you did get a hold of the owner operator to let him know what was going on at that time what what did he say to you at that time if you got if you had the chance to talk to him um so of course i mean he he was on my side as as i'm one of his drivers Right. Um, I, again, I did nothing wrong. And what helped me in that instant is because he had cameras on the inside and the outside of his truck. So he initially had to order his film. And once he seen everything, you know, it was really nothing he could say. But don't forget by them seizing the trailer. It was an Amazon trailer. So that made his load late. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I couldn't, you know. I, I couldn't get mad at, at what he decided to do, right? Because he has a business to run. All I can say is that whole situation cost me my job when it could have easily been, listen, just put my information in your car, in your in your computer, and you'll see that I'm just like when the FBI agent came back to him and when he was in my truck searching the truck, he said, yes, I, I ran everything. She has a CDL. She's good to go. It could have been merely as easy as that. Sean, like it didn't have to go to you yanking me out of my truck, assaulting me, putting your private part against me. Or it didn't have to go to that. And so we have to be held accountable again. That's that's my major thing, right? Because if officials have a have a have a, a level of of everything they have to do. They that's why they go through an extensive training, right? And so you can't come out to the street and then do everything you wasn't trained properly to do. Like you got to know what you're doing. We pay you to know what you're doing. We pay taxes. You you work for us. So when you think you're an official and you can pull truck drivers out their truck, that can't fly. That We can't let that go like that. Because just like it happened to me, it could happen to the next driver. If I wasn't holding on, Sean, to the steering wheel and to the door, they could have hurt me. Like I, They could have pulled me down into the ditch and I, I could have hit my head. You pulling me from a truck. Not a car, as he kept saying, get out of the car, get out of the car. Sir, it's not a car. It's a tractor trailer, sir. It's 13 six. All right. So let's circle back around to that. Maybe the first time he asked you, maybe the second time. But when when you kind of seen that it was about to go left, why not just get out and just say here, Give me what you're going to give me, and, and I'll just be on my way. Again, I didn't feel safe. Okay. I didn't feel safe. When you, when you have an officer saying, get out of a car, and you're in a truck, a 13-6 truck, somebody else needs to be called to the scene. She was good to the bathroom. That, that does not bother me. We, we, we didn't know what was going on. So I, I, need, your, I need your license. Because you stopped, you, you stopped on the highway with no words. Ma'am, don't make this any harder than it has to be.
like a female cop or like a supervisor. He didn't need to get out of the truck. All he had to do was get on the radio and say, can I get a supervisor out here? Now, once the supervisor would have came, right, because that's the delegate, right, I would have proceeded because I would have felt safe, okay, I would have got out the truck. But, you know, again, I have to make sure my safety is first, right? Right. And then what ended up happening? Yeah. Okay, so. well, I probably want to say in defense of the of the cop, he at the heat of the moment, he was just probably saying get out of the car at the heat of the moment but i he probably knew that it was a truck but at the heat of the moment everything that was going on and escalating at that point he he just pretty much wanted you out so he probably could have been on a motorcycle or something like that and he would have yeah he'd, sir get out of the truck and you're on a motorcycle I, i'm i'm just trying to make light of everything it was everything that went on in the video was 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 crazy enough but but yeah man i'm glad that you that you wasn't hurt to the point of things could have went like to the extreme left so i'm i'm definitely glad about that but as you mentioned you can't go into too much detail about what's the aftermath of everything but as of right now it it, it is being handled you got attorneys on top of that and stuff like that well, you know, a, a, a legal team can consist of more than one person. So if anybody else, you know, that may be watching or, or listening to this situation, um, again, I'm sure that you're going to be playing parts of the video that I go over to you, as well as maybe you won't, or maybe you know the other video where I had an uh, a issue with the police. Um, it, it can't be a coincidence, right? It has to be something that's, that's really going on. Real quick, I want to talk about the second one. <laughs> Why you hiding from the camera? Come on back in the camera. What's your badge number? Officer What's your name again? What's your name again? What's your badge number? What's your badge? May I have my license? What's your What's your name? Driver's license, please. What's your name? I'm going to ask you. What's your name and your badge number? This is your last. I don't gotta ask y'all nothing. I don't gotta answer y'all. Y'all supposed to have the state police out here. You're about to. What's your name? What's your name? It's right here. What's your badge number? Sergeant Dublino. What's your badge number? One zero two four. What's your, what's your name? Yeah, it's in my hand. Congratulations. You're retarded. Couldn't have done that. You just basically got yourself arrested for no reason. Oh, you're not arrested. They arrested me for no reason. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. I'll be out. The second one, it looks like you're at a truck stop and it looks like you're apart. 
and they came, knocked on the door to get your attention and stuff like that. And I'll let you take over from there. But are you still at that time driving for the same uh, owner op or is this a totally different company? That no, this is happened? a totally, yeah, yeah. This is a totally different company. I mean, and everything can be verified if you look at the time and the dates on, on the cameras, you'll see everything. Um, and like I said, did this happen like within 30 days of each other, right? Um, except for the, the, the second one, you know, just like you said, well, what, what would have happened if I would have stepped out? Like they, I stepped out of the se- I stepped out of the truck on the second one and they still locked me up, you know? So it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's something else deeper that's going on. And again, I mean, I, I can't keep letting officials, you know, violate my rights. I have my rights. I'm a citizen. I'm a United States citizen. I pay my taxes. You know, I'm 42 years old. OK, I done gave my state, which is my state in Virginia. I done gave Virginia a lot of money paying taxes. OK, um, I done gave I done paid Virginia a lot of money, you know, uh, paying taxes. Like, you know, we pay for them to work. And so when, when they when they start to feel like that, they can, you know, do whatever they want to do, violate rights and, and not be held accountable. That's when we have to, you know step in and say something we can't just be like oh well, i don't know what is happening no it, it's a reason and you need to find out why your rights is being violated all right um, so the sec- so so the second one where where were you and what happened i was in florida uh this this particular time all the way in florida and some of the same thing is happening okay i'm, I'm always somewhere where i don't know anything about it except for to deliver a load or pick one up I'm in, I'm falsely arrested in Florida as well. So, you know, I, you know, I'm putting, I'm being put in situations that's unsafe for me. Right. I don't, I don't just go around getting locked up. Right. Like I'm, I'm doing a job. I'm at work. I'm not in a personal vehicle. Okay. I'm at work, Sean. Right. I'm so you know, what I'm in happened? commercial vehicles. What, what happened? Like what, what brought all the attention to you when you was in Florida? Because it looked from the video, from the video, it looks like you were asleep. So what happened? Why why the attention came to your truck? Correct. So I was parked for the for the day. I I run my I was at night, so I was parked for the day. When I got there, it was a full it was a full truck stop. It's Florida. It happens, right? But what it was, it was a side parking spot where I could park my truck and trailer. Now, was it a pocket parking spot? No, but it was the area where, you know how we do, we park on the side, we make our own parking spots, okay? No problem. It was three trucks that actually did the same thing that I did. If you take a look at the video real quick, you will see it's actually a truck parked to the left of me in the fire zone. Like, he was parked in the fire zone, and nobody said anything to him. Where I was parked at, I was just parked along the curb. It, w- it wasn't a fire zone. I was just parked along the curb. So what happened was an associate of pallet came out and was banging on the door. So I'm sleeping. I'm thinking it might be a lot lizard. I didn't initially move, right? But when they kept banging, I was like, what's going on? Like, you know, so I opened up the window. She said, you got to move from right here. And so I'm looking around lockout, right? I'm like, okay, it's a truck right there in the fire zone. And it's one behind me, right, in the fire zone. But where I parked, it wasn't open space. The curb wasn't painted or nothing like that, right? So that's why I thought I was good. I thought I wouldn't have no issues until I started back rolling. She said, you have to move. Um, I said, okay. I said, I'm out of time. I said, and I'm, 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 yeah, I'm out of hours and I was sleeping. I said, um, she said, yeah, but you, you still got to move. Okay. And I'm looking around. The whole place is full, right? So I said, okay, no problem. I said, could you do me a favor? Could you call the police? I don't know what city I'm in. You know, I just know I was in Florida and I had delivered up the street. I said, could you call the police and see if they can come out and escort me maybe to the Walmart so that, you know, I won't have no issues because I'm out of time. No, no personal convenience, nothing. Right. Um, that company didn't offer that. Um, so she said, sure, no problem. Um, I see if they can come out and escort you. Then you see, you see the video, like everybody in the, the department showed up. It was like, t- <laughs> like five SWAT cars showed up and I'm just like, what's, what is, what is this for? What is, what are they doing? Initially one officer came to the driver's seat 
driver driver side. He said, you know, hey, what, what's going on? I said, yeah, I called you guys. I had somebody from Pilot call you guys so that um, I could get one of you to possibly escort me uh, down the street or somewhere to park, you know, because I'm out of time. He said, OK, no problem. Let me go talk to them. I guess he was talking about all the officers that had pulled to the front of my truck. You see, they was blocking me in like it was like a whole drug bust. Now, mind you, when you look at the video, you see the whole other truck and trailer parked to the left. Nobody is saying anything to them. Um, nobody is saying nothing to them. They all surrounding my truck, right? And again, like you said, I was sleeping. I had to actually get dressed. I was trying to communicate to them, hey, could you stop banging on the truck? It's other truck drivers coming, tr looking at me. You know, if you're not dressed and another truck driver looking through the window, they can see you. So I was trying to let the officers know, let me get dressed. I will be out. I called y'all out, okay? Like, calm down. <laughs> Why are you banging on my door? I'm coming. I'm coming out to talk to you. No problem, right? So again, with him keep banging, um, I said, I said, uh, I said, uh, I said, listen, the, the main reason I called you out here, sir, is because I needed someone to possibly escort me up the street to where I can park safely, right? He goes, I ain't escorting you nowhere. Get out the truck. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Now, mind you, this is a few days after all the first one had happened. So I'm like, man, what, what, what's the problem? Like, what, what's the problem? You know, it, it, it just got to be stopped. It doesn't make any sense, you know. And uh, again, you've seen what happened on the video. I get out because I want to see, I want to know who these guys are. I want to know who, what what county they're with. What's, what, what department is this that's, that's so unprofessional like there's no reason for them to be unprofessional banging on my door you got bystanders letting them see inside my truck why is other truck drivers trying to look in my truck like so it's, it's like you know again we all got to be held accountable and that's just that's just the bottom line yeah okay so so the second incident you was the one that had the request for the cops to come I them. It it didn't go to it didn't go the way of the truck stop employee knocking on your door. You answer the door, kind of aggressive. They ask you. Well, not to, at all. That's they, all. That, not they, at all. They ask you to move. You refuse to move because you're out of hours. Then they went back to make the call to the police department. No, no not at all. Okay. Not at all. Okay. I don't care about moving. I don't care about moving, right? But it's just that if I'm out of time, I just need an officer escort. It, it, it's not a big deal. It's, it's, it's so simple, right? I didn't have a standoff with the employee. I just said, hey, could you go call the police and see if they can get somebody to escort me? She said, sure. I done been back to that store and actually spoke with her and stuff like that. And she actually told me, she was like, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Like, that was, because they was, everything is on camera for them too. Where I was parked, their their outside cameras could see everything. Okay, so you're inside the truck. You're not dressed properly. When you already requested for the officers to come, why not just get ready? So they got there immediately. Like when I told her, when I said, "Hey, could you call one of the one of your, the police to see if one of them can?" I thought they was go be lollygag, or I thought they was go be slow to arrive because, hey, you coming to a truck stop? The truck driver called to see if you could escort. So I honestly thought it wasn't going to be on their first to-do list. So when I asked her that, I just sat back down and looked, and I was like, I thought I was all right. All of a sudden, one of the officers came to the driver's side door. He said, hey, what's going on? I said, yeah, man, I, I was sleeping. They told me I got to move. I said, can one of y'all escort me, like, up the street to Walmart, you know, so I can get find a place to park? He was like, yeah, let me go ask them. Now, where FBI come from, where banging on my door come from, I have no idea. Okay. I have no wait, idea. Wait, 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 wait. You you just twist me there for a minute. So FBI was at the truck stop as well? Well, not FBI. They pulled up like SWAT, son. Okay, well, okay. What was the, what was, okay, okay. You seen how they pulled up. They okay. blocked my truck in like as if I was about to go somewhere. All right. So <laughs> you, oh, okay. Okay. So 
Now the officer, I guess another officer, because from what I seen in the video, looked like the one officer that was asking you for your driver's license and everything was on the passenger side. Is right. That's that. Those are the group of guys that the first officer when he got. Okay, so, so when I've talked to the yeah, so the officer that you had the interactions with is that the same officer that that arrested you as well? Because now no, you're because no. now you're out now you're outside of the truck because I I think the video went off abruptly when you said let me get dressed and I'm not sure if I've seen anything else after that but you got out of the truck and you said that things kind of went left from there so what was going on between you and the officer after after you got out of the truck initially you okay, only wanted so, it so you only wanted the escort why what happened from getting asking for an escort to being led to jail so real quick right um so in my mind don't forget the first situation that had just happened right did you take it off okay so um, so, so initially, don't forget what had just happened to me less than 30 days ago. So when this happened, I'm like, Lord, let me hurry up and get dressed, okay, so I can step out and talk to them face to face. And this is what everybody wants to see me do, step out of the truck, right? So I get out of the truck. I'm like, initially in my mind, I'm like, let me find out who these guys are. Are they SWAT? Are they FBI? Are they looking for somebody different? Like, who are they looking for? Right. Um, and so I'm like, who, who are you with? What's your name? I had my camera, like my phone. I was recording. I'm like, who, what's your name? What what department are you with? Because I'm in a state where I don't know. Right. I wanted to get everybody's name and find out why are they so alarmed? Like I'm a truck driver. I just delivered y'all some water. Why are y'all so aggressive? And well, while doing that, they they knocked the phone out of my hand and arrest me and said, congratulations, you just got arrested. So why are you arresting me? I got arrested for nothing. So why are you arresting me again? Okay. I'm confused. I, I've never, I've never heard of such. I've never heard of, of officials taking things from zero to 10 for no reason. I, I just honestly, it's, it's baffling to me. Like, I, and then listen, this time I remained silent, which is one of the first lines in the, the Amanda rights. I remained silent. I had nothing else to say. After I'm in a state where I don't know it's going to be a problem, I remain silent. Guess what they did, Lockout? I'm listening. They locked, they locked me. They put me in the psych ward. They put me in the psych ward. And I asked the nurses, I said, why am I going in the psych ward? I was at work. They said, oh, because you decided to remain silent. The officer said, you, because you remain silent, he wanted to put you in the psych ward. If that ain't a violation of my rights, I don't know what is. If that's not a violation of my rights, I don't know. I don't know what would be the definition of violating my rights. So, so yeah, this can't can't keep happening. All right. So you got out of the truck, cell phone in hand, recording. I'm I'm just visualizing here, mm -hmm. based on what you're saying. So with the phone in your hand, you go to each person and ask them what name, badge number, stuff like that, right? Correct, correct. So what's your name? I'm Officer Yannis. What's your badge number? Officer Mavazza with the Hanson City Police Department. What's your, what's your name again? What's your name again? Officer Mavazza. What's your badge number? What's your badge? Can I have my license? Do you have your driver's license, please? What's your, what's your name? Driver's license, please. What's your name? I'm going to and, ask and your, you. What's your name and your this badge your number? This is your last. I don't got to ask y'all nothing. I don't got to answer y'all. Y'all supposed to have the state police out here. You're about to. Be what's your detained. name? What's your name? It's right here. What's your right, badge Sergeant number? Sergeant What's your badge number? 1024. What's your, what's your name? Yeah, yeah it's in my hand. Congratulations. Which is in my legal right to do. And Go I'm going to, I'm going to probably, like I said, I'm just visualizing here that some of the cops got intimidated by it pretty much by you with the phone in your hand and send their face and you ask what you were asking them and stuff like that the the one officer i guess you try to circle back around to him he knocks the phone out your hand and we we do hear something to the effect that you're getting arrested and I think he did say something that you're getting arrested for nothing, but, uh, but yeah, the cell phone, the, the cell phone video 
and laws sometimes don't turn out the way a person would intend it to turn out. Some officers that I seen in situations with the with the driver or another person with the cell phone and what's your name, badge number, yada yada yada. Usually the interactions don't go all that great. So after they arrested you, did you get a chance to call the company to let them know what happened? And if so, was they able was you able to go back to the truck afterwards? How long you was held? Again, they illegally searched the truck. They had the truck seized, which, again, is against my Fourth and Eighth Amendment rights. Um, they falsely arrested me. It could have easily been a ticket, a parking ticket, right? They could have easily been like, move. I don't care where you go. You got to get from here. They could have easily said all of that. Again, it went from zero to ten for absolutely no reason. Uh, the police reports that they wrote was false. They said I was Puerto Rican. You had my driver's license. I'm a black woman. So why are you falsifying your police reports? We got to be held accountable for the things we do, for the things we say. They threatened me. They told me if I went into the jail running my mouth, that they, that I see what's going to happen to me. What you mean running my mouth? I, I remain silent once you put me in handcuffs. So what you mean? That's Torton. That's T-O-R-T-I-N-G. Look it up. Okay. You can't threaten. You can't. As an official, you, it's things you cannot do. Okay. They also didn't have a female cop. Okay, so listen, man, I, I really appreciate you, you know, uh, talking with me uh, about these situations, you know, as a fellow truck driver. I, pre I appreciate your platform, you know. Um, I can't imagine other situations that other drivers or female drivers or male drivers either. I can't imagine other situations that take place and they just don't say nothing, right? They don't hold these officials accountable, right? I was in the back of his cruiser for almost an hour with my hands in, in, in handcuffs. <laughs> my, my arms was numb, Sean. I don't know if you ever sat with your hands behind your back, but it, it comes a point, if it's long enough, your, your arms become numb. Why, if you're going to put me in the back of your car, take me on down to the jail. Why you let me sit in the back of your car for an hour? So I'm speaking out on your platform. I appreciate you. I hope this helps somebody else. I have contacted several Several organizations, NAACP, okay? I have contacted the Black Panther organization. I have contacted the LGBTQ community. I have contacted several organizations. All these things got to be brought to a light, man. Like I said, we, we move the United States, and we can't keep getting violated this way. When they pull our truck over, they're supposed to respect us like we respect them. Definitely not supposed to be where they're pulling you out your truck or they're arresting you for no reason, period. All right, LaDon. Well, thank you very much for coming on and sharing your story. I, I do agree, accountability for for everything that's going on out here i do appreciate you coming on sharing your story and yeah hopefully everything uh, that you got going on as far as restitution wise works out in your favor hey i i appreciate that um and and, and let's hope hope it do if somebody contact you want to talk to me you have my information um and you know if you know anybody that can move forward, you, you have my information. So, um, again, I appreciate you, sir. Um. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes. Look, Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. The crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.